With the death of the Merry Monarch, the crown passed to yet another Stuart, James II. Like Charles, James II had no regard for Parliament. He thought it a nuisance and declared he would rule without it. For the English, it was an all too familiar story. Would England be forever ruled by an endless line of Stuart kings? An unhappy thought. So the Bishop of London and six laymen took it upon themselves to invite, secretly, the ruler of the Netherlands, William of Orange, to bring his army and protect the English people from their own king. William agreed to the plan, and when he landed with his troops, the English army deserted James and the deposed monarch fled to France. Not a single shot was fired, and England's second revolution came to be known as the Bloodless or Glorious Revolution. The grateful country offered William and his wife Mary the throne, but this time there were strings attached. This time Englishmen were going to be sure that whoever sat on the throne understood the limits on royal powers before they got the job. A document was drawn up to specify the terms by which England would be governed. It said in part that no laws were to be made or suspended unless Parliament approved. No taxes were to be levied without the consent of Parliament. Trials must have juries. It was lawful to keep arms and that elections to Parliament must be free. To the joy of the kingdom, William and Mary consented to the terms of this document. John Locke might have called it a social contract, but the English people simply called it their Bill of Rights. What an extraordinary century it was for England. Civil war, a king beheaded, military rule, and recurrent strife. And yet, while all that was going on, Englishmen were spawning colonies an ocean away, emigrating to the New World and carrying with them English laws and customs, and some firm ideas about government and the rights of English citizens. After the Glorious Revolution, England was on a course that would lead to a supreme parliament, while in the New World, Englishmen would travel a very different path.